Hello lovely people, my name is Nicole and today I want to talk about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. So if you have been living under a rock for the past several months, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is a play that was currently being performed in London and the script was released as the sort of eighth Harry Potter story. Not the eighth Harry Potter book, because it's a script, not a book. But it's the eighth Harry Potter story and this story picks up almost exactly where the Deathly Hallows epilogue left off. In fact, the first scene is the epilogue to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. And then the story follows Harry and his son Albus just sort of trying to live their lives, get through school, deal with their parent-child relationship, and Albus dealing with being Harry Potter's son, which is no easy task. And then Albus making friends with Draco Malfoy's son, Scorpius, and being sorted into Slytherin and all that jazz. Let me tell you, I was so excited for this to come out. I was absolutely beside myself. Granted, I was a little bit cautious but optimistic just because I know that it's been a really long time and I've, I've had those, you know, nine years to sort of solidify my own ideas of what happens to the next gen and who they are and, and who they're friends with and who they're in love with and all that jazz. And so like I've solidified my own headcanons. And so I went into this fully aware of the fact that it probably won't match all or even most of my headcanons and that that's okay. And that if, you know, any of this doesn't feel right to me, I don't have to accept that as canon. And like, I, I don't get me wrong, I'm fully aware of the fact that yes, this is the canonical eighth Harry Potter story, but like, I mean for my own personal canon, what I know to be true in my heart, just because, you know, that's, that's what I need to do to make peace with my own world of Harry Potter that is very dear to me, because I love Harry Potter. If you don't know me, then you, there's, if there's one thing you should know about me, it's that I love Harry Potter. I grew up with Harry Potter. It, I would say that it is, has probably been one of, if not the biggest influence on who I am today. I love Harry Potter and so I was so excited for this and then I was so disappointed. I finished it at about 4am on the 31st because I went to the Barnes & Noble Minute release. Oh, I was so disappointed. This first part is going to be spoiler free. I will warn you when I'm about to get spoilery. But for those of you who haven't read it yet and are considering whether or not to pick it up, here's sort of my general reasons why I didn't like it without getting too specific. It was, honestly, it was just weird. And it says on here that it was based on original new story by JK Rowling and then new play by Jack Thorne, which, uh, seems, seems to be saying that this wasn't actually written by JK Rowling. The story was conceptualized by her, and then it was written by someone else. And I feel like that's really, really clear in the writing style and in the language used, and just in the specific details of the plot, they just felt wrong. They just sort of felt off, and they didn't have that same really warm vibe that Harry Potter has always had, that feeling of you know, this is home, coming back to Hogwarts, this is home, this is like where you're supposed to be at the end of the day, no matter all the other like dramatic shit that's going on, your friends and your family and the ones you love, those are your home and like all that stuff. And this didn't have that same vibe. And like I said earlier, it was just kind of strange. The Like the individual plot points were weird. I felt a little bit contrived. I've compared it on Tumblr and Twitter to a crack fic. Um, if you are not familiar with the world of fan fiction, a crack fic is something that is not meant to be taken seriously. It's something that's funny. It's ridiculous. It's completely out of the realm of possibility. It's just meant to be weird and funny. This kind of felt like that, but it felt like a crack fic that was trying to take itself seriously, which doesn't work. Uh, that kind of goes against the entire like meaning of crack fic. In particular, it just kind of felt like a lot of the mains from the previous series just felt really out of character. The only things that felt like, yes, this is exactly how this person would act were uh, McGonagall just having some times where she was just completely done with everyone's bullshit and then Ron making stupid dad jokes because let's be real, Ronald Weasley was made to make bad dad jokes. But everyone else just felt kind of off. And I get that, you know, 19 years of growth and living and having kids changes a person. But like, 
they don't change a person that much. I felt like Harry in particular was really, really out of character. He did some things that seemed like toxic level bad parenting, and that is genuinely concerning to me because Harry it seems like the kind of person who he wouldn't always be like a perfect parent because you know it's it's Harry he's kind of an idiot I love him he's kind of an idiot at times but like he would always try his best and try and do what he thought was best for his kids but he would always know like where the line was and he wouldn't cross it because he really cares about his kids and he wants them to trust him and he wants them to respect him. I felt like he didn't really have that like morality line in this, which was really weird. And then Hermione felt out of character, um, not so much in like the little details, but more in her general life path. It felt really out of character for her. It felt like the kind of thing that from a quick glance you'd be like, yeah, okay, whatever, that makes sense. But if you actually take the time to like look at who Hermione is, that's not who she is. That's not what she wants. And then there are just really random scenes that just popped up all over the place that were genuinely just confusing in how strange they were. And I'm not going to get too specific with those right now just because, like I said, I don't want to spoil things, but it was just weird. But overall, the story just felt really forced. Because, I mean, at the end of Deathly Hallows, all the dramatic dark shit was all wrapped up. That was done. And Granted, there are plenty of discussions that are well worth getting into on how nothing about the Wizarding World societal issue of pure-blood elitism and what is essentially racism weren't actually solved in the Harry Potter books, and so it's not unlikely that at some point another Voldemort will rise. And those discussions are very well worth having, and I've seen some really, really interesting points on them, but that's not what this was. Basically, in my opinion, any story about uh, the next gen basically has to be like a high school drama because I feel like there's really nowhere else to go with the big magical people trying to take over the world thing and any anywhere that you could go would be really just contrived and forced and weird and that's exactly what this was it felt like they were like crap we have to come up with another story uh here's an idea and it was, it, oh, it was just weird. One of the main plot points just felt so fundamentally wrong based on the books and the characters in the books and their actions and their interactions with each other. It was, it was, um, I'll talk about it more in the spoilery part, but, um, it was basically one of the main driving factors for the plot in this story and it was, no. No. And also this main driving factor wasn't something that was particularly interesting or inventive. It's something that's been used over and over again. Like, it's basically a soap opera trope at this point. It's not interesting. It's not fun. It's not cool. So I gave this 1.5 stars, which let me tell you, giving a Harry Potter book anything less than 5 stars broke my heart. I genuinely think this just it wasn't good and normally when I do book reviews for books that I didn't like I try and stay positive try and find aspects that were good about it and like if you well you might like it if you like blah 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 but honestly I feel like Jake I mean I know that JK Rowling can do better she, we have an entire book series of books proving that she can do absolutely incredible things and this was not one of those incredible things. I know that she can do better and I know other people who have done way better when it comes to writing about the next gen. So personally when it comes to stories of the next gen for me I will be sticking with my fanfiction because as trivialized as people like to make it there are some pretty damn impressive like 300k fics about the next gen that I hold very dear to my heart. So those I will be accepting as my own personal canon and I will be aggressively ignoring pretty much everything in this. So that's it for the non-spoilery part. I'm about to go into detail so if you have not read Cursed Child yet, go read it if you want. Um, if you're not planning on reading it, then please stick around and hear me talk shit about it because <laughs> um, I'm about to get a little bit ranty just because there were a number of things that made me not happy that I want to specifically point out in this. So go read it if you're going to, if not, 
or if you already have read it, stick around and we'll get a little spoilery. Okay, so for spoilery stuff, first thing I want to talk about, just because it is vividly burned into my brain, the trolley witch. I know it's like a little like single scene in the book and it's not that big, but um, what the fuck? That was some crazy ass like Mrs. Dodds type shit. Like let's be real, she basically turned into a freaking harpy. What even happened there? Why are we letting this thing watch our children? But like this is what I'm talking about when I said it reminded me of a crack fic. It's the kind of thing that just came out of nowhere and was absolutely absurd with no other like backing in canon, no logical reason for why on earth something like that would happen. It's just weird and crazy and what are you doing JK Rowling and Jack Thorne? Seriously. Speaking of crack fic like things and what the hell are you doing, earlier in the non spoilery section I mentioned how the like main driving force was basically a soap opera trope. The whole Voldemort's daughter thing? Long lost daughter? Okay, is that not a soap opera trope? It totally, totally is. Not to mention the fact that this whole thing is basically just Halloween Town 2, Calabar's Revenge. Great movie. And like, let's be real, Halloween Town did it better. Although, to be fair, Halloween Town does everything better. Those movies are gold. But that is beside the point. Okay, I actually had a discussion with someone on Tumblr about this, um, sort of trying to figure out when the hell did Bellatrix have time to have a kid? Also, why the hell was Lord Voldemort sleeping with Bellatrix? Like, I know that she totally would and definitely like wanted to because she was obsessed with him, but first of all, she was married. Um, how do you think Rodolphus felt about that? Second of all, I feel like Voldemort's not the kind of person who would sleep with anyone, really? He seems like the kind of person who's just be like, eh, I'm too busy for that shit, taking over the world. Can you just like leave me alone and let me do my thing, Bella? I just feel like he wouldn't be interested. Like, I have no doubt that he definitely slept around while he was in Hogwarts. I mean, come on, we all saw Chamber of Secrets. We all know that 16 year old Tom Riddle was a babe. But I feel like, especially once he's like in his 60s, because he was like 60 when he died. Once he's in his 60s, once he's died, essentially, once already, and is very, very focused on taking over the world, he just doesn't seem like he'd have very much time for getting laid. Also, when did Bellatrix have time to carry a baby around for nine months? She was kind of busy doing the whole helping take over the world thing. I mean, we saw her at the end of Half-Blood Prince, and then we saw her pretty regularly through Deathly Hallows, and supposedly no one knew about this baby. When did she have time to get pregnant? When did she have time to have a baby bump? She didn't. It doesn't make sense. There is literally no reason that this baby should exist. The one thing I do accept is that Albus and Scorpius are definitely best friends. Now Scorpius's crush on Rose is weird. Um, don't get me wrong, I've read some really good Score Rose fix. But the way that this one was set up with like Rose being super super angry at them and Scorpius just like being like, ha, she's so pretty. That, mm, that was, no, I didn't, I didn't like that. Personally, I am fully in support of uh, Scorpius, Scorpius and Albus. I firmly believe that they're in love. But speaking of fan fiction, I, w I was reading Cursed Child and I was like, you know, this, this feels really familiar. Why does this feel so familiar? You know, the whole going back in time to try and like fix something, it doesn't work and like it creates a whole different universe and then you have to like go back and try to change something else and that creates a whole different universe and you have to go back and change something else like over and over again until you like find the right solution. I was like, how oh, that feels, that feels weirdly familiar. Why does that feel so familiar? I have read that fic. Granted, it was with Draco going back and changing things instead of Scorpius, but uh, there's a fic on Archive of Our Own called Life is a Twice Written Scroll by Lauren3210 and it basically features Draco going back in time and like making little edits to history trying to basically save his parents and stop the war and he does it a number of times and then finally like finds a wonderful world where like no one died and it's great and I'm like that's the exact same thing 
This is literally taken straight out of a fic. It was just all these things piling on top of each other that honestly, I just, I couldn't take it. I had to finish it, obviously but nothing about this worked for me really. And I feel like one of the main things that I just had a visceral no reaction to was Harry's parenting. Don't get me wrong, I fully believe that Harry is not gonna be a perfect parent. He's gonna be learning as he goes and he is going to mess up sometimes, but he's always gonna like figure it out in the end and like do the right thing. You know what's not the right thing and what's like bordering on potentially abusive behavior? Monitoring your child's whereabouts on the Marauder's map so like you, you make sure that they're not hanging out with anyone that you don't like. What the hell, Harry? That's not okay. Like he knows what it's like to grow up in a really not healthy home. He doesn't want that for his kids. Harry would not do that. Also, it has been fully established by J.K. Rowling herself that James stole the map out of Harry's drawer when he was like 12. So, Harry doesn't even have the map. And another thing, Hermione's job. I literally woke up the next morning and was like, did I actually read that? Or was that, was that like a, was that a fic? Did I dream that? This Hermione is Minister of Magic. Huh. No. That's... No. I don't... I don't feel like she'd want to be a minister. I mean, like, she's definitely higher up in the ministry, most likely in law enforcement or working with, um, creature protections, things like that. But minister... Here's the thing. Hermione's not a Slytherin. And while, yes, uh, there is the fact that Hermione does kind of represent traits from all four houses, and she's amazing that way, but Hermione's not, like, give me all the power and all, like, manage everything. No, Hermione knows what she's good at. Hermione likes to focus on that. Hermione wants to make the best, like, her little bit the best that it can possibly be. She doesn't need overarching power. That's not Hermione. I just, I just, I don't feel like she'd be minister. It just feels wrong to me. I don't know, those were some of the main issues I had. If I think of anything else, I'll write comments galore, but really those are the big things. I just, so much of it felt so wrong to me, just fundamentally wrong. And like I said, I mean, it does feel unnecessary, but if it were good, I'd still take it, like even if it's unnecessary. Like I am fully in support of authors writing as much as they want about their worlds because like it's their worlds and they can write as much as they want and like if they feel like they still have something to say about it then they should but i think the, the fact that this wasn't actually written by jk rowling and it's just weird and contrived and tropey and just so much of it is so out of sync with the rest of the series i just i can't i can't do it. I can't accept it as my canon. I've also seen a lot of people comparing it to a very Potter musical, comparing like specific lines or character motivations or scenarios, um, which I find absolutely hilarious how well it matches up. But I mean, one of the problems with that is that a very Potter musical is fully aware of the fact that it's crack. A very Potter musical is ridiculous and it's supposed to be ridiculous and it's aware of the fact that it's ridiculous. This is ridiculous trying to take itself seriously. I don't know, I just, I had so many issues with it and so much of it was just not good. It breaks my heart, but I'm gonna just pretty much pretend it doesn't exist for the sake of my own headcanons. I have built up my own scenario and life for the next gen over the past nine years and I'm really really happy with that I I don't I don't need this and I'm okay with that I mean obviously like I said it's heartbreaking but I've I think I've made my peace with it and that's okay I'm still really really excited for Fantastic Beasts and if Chris Child works for other people that's great I am so happy for them but it's just not for me so those are my thoughts on Chris Child if you have thoughts, please let me know in the comments. I'm really interested in hearing what you guys have to say. I love you, and I will see you later. Bye!